get started on our broadcast for today. Um, this is the first Sunday of this month. And what we normally do on the first Sunday, we bring ourselves in remembrance of the Lord. And our scripture is found in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 32. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity you give us to come make this broadcast, to come make these recordings that will be here for all times, even when we depart and go home, they'll still be here for people to listen to and learn from your word. Father, we always ask that you will guide us by your Holy Spirit and what we say and how we interpret the scripture that it will be according to what you want us to do here. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you will forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So we are in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. No matter how many times, we did this all last year, the first Sunday, right? And every time we go in here, we see more. Uh, that's because God's word is a living word. It can never be exhausted. And since we know just in part, <laughs> we're getting more and more parts of it. Amen? 1 Corinthians 11, starting at the 23rd verse, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do, this do, and remember of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And that's where most churches stop reading. But let's see what else the Lord has to say. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we shall not be condemned with the world. Amen? Amen. This is very powerful. We, what I want to do here today is jump right down to verse 27. And uh, you're going to have to hold your place in this chapter because we're going to be going back and forth. So verse 27 says, Whos Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, how does that read out of Amplified? It says, so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, this leads me to a scripture. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Most people can quote this, but 
listen with your heart today. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the way you find out truth, you divide scripture with honest scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now what does it say out of Amplified? It says, study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen. Now, our last session we had over here, and we were teaching on prosperity, we got a little bit carried away as far as I was concerned, because what we want to do in these videos, we want to rightly divide the word of truth. And if anybody has anything to say about it, the truth, they should be talking to the master. Amen. Not to me. No. I'm here just to proclaim it. Now, in James, the third chapter, which is a very powerful chapter, because what we want to do is rightly divide this word today. It says in James, the third chapter, verse 13, who is a wise man and endures with knowledge among you? That's the question. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. For this wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, senseless, devilish. So a lot of people have a lot of knowledge, they know a lot of scriptures, and they always when you read them a scripture or a passage, they always have something to say. Yeah, this is. Uh, okay, nine, hold on. Nine. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruits of righteousness is sowed in peace to them that make peace. Now, how does them verses read out of the Amplified 13 through 18? It states, who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with gentleness and humbleness humility of true wisdom but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts mm -hmm. do not be arrogant and as a result be in defiance of the truth mm -hmm. this superficial wisdom is not that which comes down from above but is earthly is secular is natural unspiritual even demonic well, where jealousy and selfish ambition is this, there is a disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled, then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, and gentle and reasonable, and willing to listen, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering, without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving goal. The seed whose fruit is righteous, spiritually maturity is sown in peace by those who make peace, by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. So as we do these recordings, we want to look at the spirit of a person. Now, we realize we know in part, that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, we, we, all of us, know in part. We know a part. 
And we, the right spirit says that uh, you are willing to listen and do everything in a peaceful manner. No? <laughs> Compassionate. Mm -hmm. Compassionate. Mm -hmm. So, just to say that, we're going to this 27th verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. I remember I said, keep your place there. Mm -hmm. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup in an unworthy, unworthy, should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So, this is what we need to, you know, bring you in remembrance of when you take the Lord's Supper, that you shouldn't do it in an unworthy manner. True? Now, in... Um, they have it, uh, an example here is in uh, Leviticus, the 10th chapter, it says, whosoever. Uh, this is one example I was looking at this morning. Mm -hmm. Leviticus, the 10th chapter, out of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. well, why are you in the Old Testament, Brother Carter? Yeah. Because God is unchangeable. Yes, what he said in the Old Testament goes all the way through to the New Testament, and I'm going to show you that today. He's talking to, we We are supposed to be part of a royal priesthood. Yeah. Isn't that what the Bible says? That's right. Uh, talk, talks about that in Peter. Mm -hmm. We're part of a royal priesthood. Yes, now, in Leviticus, the 10th chapter, the first verse, it says, Nebat and Abihu, the sons of Aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fires before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out far from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that. The Lord speaks, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Now, how does it read out Amplified? It says, Now, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective ceremonial censers put fire in them, placed the incense on it, and offered strange, unauthorized, unacceptable fire before the Lord, an act which he had not commanded them to do. Mm. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord said. I will be treated as holy by those who approach me. And before all people, I will be honored. And so Aaron, therefore, said nothing. Amen. So in uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, they were doing something in an unworthy manner. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 28th verse, it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So that's what happened there. Now, how does this all relate to the New Testament? Go to John, the 13th chapter. Let's see how this all sums up. Because what it says in the Old Testament, it's going to say the same thing in the New Testament. It's just going to say it, it's going to bring it in a different way. Now, we find, we see here in this 13th chapter, they're talking about the Feast of the Passover, which that's why we do the Lord's Supper in remembrance of that. Now, in verse 13, 18, of this book of John, Jesus is talking here, our Master and our Lord. 
I speak not to you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receives whosoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him who sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples took, looked at one on another, doubting of whom he speak. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he speak. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I should give salt when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped it, dipped the salt, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Amen. And after the salt, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Jesus knows all the Bibles. Now, read out of the Amplified, verses 26 and 27. How does that read out of the Amplified? Judas, after Judas had taken the piece of bread. Is it 26? Oh, you want 26 and 27? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, it is the one who, to whom I'm going to give this piece of bread after I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the piece of bread into the dish, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. After Judas had taken the piece of bread, Satan entered him. And then Jesus said to him, what you are going to do? Do it quickly without delay. So this is where Jesus was betrayed at this last summer. We need to remember that. But he says, let a man examine himself and so eat of that bread and drink of this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy and and drinketh, he eateth unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not the son of the Lord's body. Now, there is another verse in 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, because there is a lot of stuff going on in the church that shouldn't be going on. You said 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And what we want to do here is, is, this was a problem in the New Testament church, as well as it is a problem in our church today. But nobody likes to talk about it. And what Jesus did here in the 13th chapter, he said uh, Satan entered into him, right? right. Satan. It wasn't Jesus, it wasn't God destroying him, no. right? It was Satan. It was Satan. Okay, here's what it says in the 5th chapter of 1 Corinthians. It says, It is reported commonly that there is fortification among you, and such fortification as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. You know, a lot of times there's sin going on in the church and they say, well, um, they don't call it sin. They say, well, he's just weak in that area. 
Bless, Bless his little heart. Mm. And here's what it says, the third verse, for I, for I verily am absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So Paul said, when somebody is acting up in the church, I mean, this man probably even may have been a deacon. Right, he was a why, uh, The woman could have been a deaconette mm -hmm. or singing in the choir. Mm -hmm. And they wasn't doing nothing about it, but Paul said that they should do something about that mm -hmm. when you have sin in the midst of you right. and you know about it. And they sin mm -hmm. You know, you need to, to, to hand them over to Satan for the, uh, the what did you say? To, uh, you are to hand over the destruction of the flesh. to Satan for the destruction of his body so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, because see, a lot of people don't want to repent. No, they don't. Amen? That's right. Now here, as we move on down here, in the 30th verse, it says, For this cause, many are sick, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, I wasn't see how to amplify it in the 30th verse, mm -hmm. that careless and unworthy participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep in death. So if you know it's sin going on in the church, we saw in, Le in Leviticus, they just got consumed by the fire right away. Yeah. Jesus, he just, um, he knew that uh, Judas was going to betray him, right, he and he he just let Satan take control of him. He didn't even have to hand him over to the devil. No. He just let the devil just and work right. his uh, way. And, right now. and in uh, the fifth chapter, Paul was saying that if you know it's just as going on in the church, you shouldn't uh, be puffed up about it yeah. and not right. doing anything about it. You should uh, tell them about it. And if they're in some kind of office or position, uh, you should get them out of there. Because it says a little leaven leaveth the whole lot. Right. That's right. And if they see them doing it, they say, well, I can do it. Ain't nothing happening to them. He said it was going to end, uh, corrupt our entire church. Right. It'll corrupt the entire church. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he said, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Mm -hmm. Now... The question is, does God make people sick? We went no. over that in no, a previous study. He be and we have came to the conclusion, what God does, he judges people. Right. When they act up so much, uh, um, he judges them. Right. He's the righteous judge of the whole earth. Amen. You know, just like we should... Uh, you know, when we say we're going to do something, we should do it Amen. and not um, turn around and not do it. Right. Now, uh, in Deuteronomy, the 30th, well, let's look at Exodus first. Because a lot of people say, well, God does put sickness on you, but no, he, he don't. Doesn't. He does not. Does sickness not. comes from the devil. And, um, you can make a decision, but you don't. In Exodus the 12th chapter, uh, God, you know, God brings all this together. He just said what causes them to get sick and weak. Uh, right. Not honoring him. Not honoring him. him and just, just acting. Not doing what he tells them to do. Right. That's why I earned it. Right. Now, in Exodus, uh, the 14th chapter, you know, uh, I can't put this together myself. Only no, the Lord can do it. Go by what's in here. But what he's talking Verse. about here in this 14th chapter is the Passover. What we're talking about today, the Lord's Supper, because Jesus was our Passover lamb. 
<laughs> Amen. And it says here in four, in uh, excuse me, in the twelfth chapter, it makes it. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I wrote one for it. The twelfth chapter, starting at the twenty-first verse. Ooh. And let's read down here, Sister Carter, to the twenty-eighth verse. This makes it plain that God is not making people sick. No, he doesn't. Because a lot of people say God is making people sick. No, he yes, does he not. Can. We have a good God, and he right. is a righteous judge. Well, let's see where this sickness comes from. Okay. With 20, starting with 21. Starting at 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take a lamb for yourselves according to the size of of your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. You shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood which is in the basin, and touch some of the blood to the lintel above the doorway, and to the two doorposts. And none of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel above the entryway and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to slay you. You shall observe this event concerning Passover as an audience for you and your children forever. Mm -hmm. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep and observe this service. When your children say to you, what does this service mean to you? You shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover before he passed over the houses of the Israelites in the Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spurred our houses. And the people bowed their heads low and worshipped God. Then the Israelites went and did as they had been told, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Now, in this 23rd verse, it says that uh, this last phrase, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come in your house to slay you. That's right. So it's the destroyer is another name for the devil who is Satan, mm -hmm. our accuser. It's Satan that's gonna do the, and the destroying, He's the destroyer. but the Lord is the righteous judge. Amen. And when you don't do what he say do, you he has to judge you. You, you put yourself under judgment, right? Right. It said, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. <laughs> mm, so they did it. <laughs> so they did. Now let's look at Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. See, the Lord just warns us and warns us. Even when we are in sin, he, yeah. he's talking to us. Yeah, mercy and uh, he don't want judgment to come on you. I mean, it, 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 gives uh, us a way it breeds God, yeah. uh, God when he has to bring judgment on his people. You know, he would rather for you uh, to repent. That's all he needs. Now, here in the 30th chapter, here's what it says. Um, this um, verse is um, 15 to 20. It says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. 
But if thy heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land where thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. The Lord is warning us all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Now, as we move on down through here to the 31st verse of his first chapter of uh, Corinthians 11th chapter, I mean the Corinthians, 1st Corinthians 11th chapter, we go to the 31st verse. This is how you not get judged. It says, for if we would judge ourselves, <laughs> praise God, we will not be judged. This is why some people, you know, you have seen them do a lot of dirt and everything, but you ain't saw no judgment come on them. Nothing's happened. Because they have judged themselves. They have judged themselves. They and they just ain't taking the Lord's yeah. Supper in an unworthy no, manner no, and coming before the Lord any kind of way. No. You know, they're coming to the Lord humbly. That's what Jesus was talking about in Luke, the thir uh, 13th chapter. We have went over that um, about when the Galileans um, were uh, slayed by Pilate. Right, he was putting blood. And blood. he said, do you think that they were worse sinners above all sinners? Right. And he told them, unless you repent. You will like Christ's spirit. Right. And then he gave another example when the tar of Siloam fell on them uh, people. And he said, do you think that they were worse sinners above all sinners? And he said, no. Unless you repent. Repentance is a gift. That's, that's when you're judging yourself. You, you know that you have went far enough. And that's what John the Baptist preached and Jesus preached all the time. Now, a lot of people, they say when they get caught in some mess, then they say, I repent. <laughs> but even if they get caught in some mess and say they repent, God will have mercy. Right. Well, some of them, they're alive. They still won't repent. Repent means... To change your old way of thinking. I right. mean, if you really throw yourself on the mercy of God, you know, I mean, you have judged yourself. You know, right. you have been maybe dogging out somebody, going with somebody's wife or somebody's mm -hmm. husband, uh, because it's in the church. Right, it's in the church. That's what Paul said. Um, you know, this man was born with his father's wife. Right. I mean, that's really pushing it, ain't it? Mm -hmm. He that's said, I ain't even heard of that among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And uh, this... This problem what we have in the church leads to a lot of divorce, a lot of broken families, a lot of kids, you know, uh, growing up without a father or a mother. But he's saying if you really change your old way of thinking, that means you're going to say, okay, I messed up God. I'm throwing myself on the mercy of God. And also, that means turn from your sinful ways. Right. So when you when you start thinking a different way, whatever sin is in your life, that means that you're going to turn from your sinful ways. That means that you're going to stop doing that. That's right. Even though Boo may be calling and saying, well, look here, you're coming over tonight. No, I'm not going to do it tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? You've been coming over here. You don't right. love me no more. You don't like me. <laughs> you know. What did I do wrong? You know? Right, what did I do? I'm going to tell your wife, you know. Don't tell her, I already told her. <laughs> and it says, also, <laughs> live changed life. That's right. That means regardless if she's going to tell your wife or whatever, you can say, well, I already told her. Right, we already, told her. we already talked about it. 
I messed up, you know, and she had mercy on me. But here's what happens in a lot of people's life. Go to, with me to the book of Proverbs. They won't listen to the Lord. They won't. They won't honor him. They won't respect him. I mean, him. they, they, they are the sitting word. up in church Sunday uh, after Sunday, and, and they, they're not listening to, to the preacher or nothing. And even though they're saying, well, it sounded like the preacher was talking to me. Right. But they're, they're not paying no attention no, to just, it. just get angry. Before you go to Proverbs, let's look at one chat. Uh, you should know this. Uh, First Peter two twenty four. We're talking about getting right with the Lord Amen. this morning. Have to do it. We may not have tomorrow. Right. Or the rest of the day. It says um, <laughs> here in First two twenty four. In King James it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And it says, Who believed? How does it read on Amplified? How does that verse read out after? He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and the power of sin, and to live for righteousness. For by his wounds mm. you who believe have been healed. Amen. Amen. Who so believe once you repent, healed. yeah. Truly, it says here in First uh, Corinthians the eleventh chapter, mm -hmm. it says, "For if we would judge ourselves, we will not be judged." That means, mm -hmm. Robert, if you, I, if I judge myself, I won't will not be judged. Amen. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we shall not be condemned with the world. Amen. I don't want no chastisement. Why don't you want chastisement? Well, uh, I think we need to stop by um, Hebrews 11, uh, 12 chapter real quick and see what um, they're talking about here. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, indeed. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. I like this out of the Amplified, uh, verses 5 through 11. If you don't mind giving them that out of the Amplified, verses 5 mm -hmm. through 11. And you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement, which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not make light of disciples of the Lord. And do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by him. Mm. For the Lord disciplines and corrects those whom he loves. And he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes to his heart. Now, a lot of people don't like this scripture. Said, well, he's going to punish me? Yeah. You know, they, because there's, they like to say, God is a good God. God is good all the time. But if you cross that line enough times, you're going to get some, you're going to get some correction. Make it burn up like because <laughs> he loves you. He loves you. And that's why one reason why uh, Paul was saying, you know, uh, turn the, the, the flesh over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that they can be saved. Right. Now, read, keep reading. Where am I going? first. Oh, okay. We yeah. must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. Well, what son is there whom the, his father does not discipline? Now, if you are exempt from correction mm. and without discipline, in which all God's children share, then you are illegitimate mm. children and not sons at all. Moreover, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we submitted and respected them for training us. Shall we not much more willingly submit to the Father of spirits 
and live by learning from his discipline? Or our earthly fathers disciplined us for only a short time, mm -hmm. as seemed best to them. But his discipline, he disciplines us for our good, so that we may share his holiness. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems sad and painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness, mm -hmm. right standing with God, and a lifestyle and an attitude that seeks conformity to God's will and purpose. See, a lot of people, by us just reading these scriptures, they're saying, Lord have mercy. I, 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 even though we may not even say it, what sin they are committing, God has touched their heart and they're saying to their to the Father right now in Jesus' name, they're saying, Lord, I have messed up. And, um, you know, I'm going to judge myself on this. I'm, I'm right. going to I'm going to change the way I'm thinking That's about right. this person because I'm just saying I love them and, and I'm married or uh, I'm, I'm going to do this regardless of what anybody says, you know, but I'm going to change my way of thinking. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to repent. Because I don't want to perish. And the Lord has been really chastising me about mm -hmm. this. Because everything that I've been trying to do, it just hasn't it worked fails. out. Without God, you don't fail. So let's get some supporting scriptures on this. Um, my, my, my. My, my is right. Go to Proverbs, the 27th chapter. You know... God is so good. Yeah, he is. But, see, a lot of people, God can just talk to. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I messed up. I'm, I'm going to fix this as soon as I get out of this worship service or wherever they heard it. They could be on. They could be riding home from work and listening to uh, somebody teaching and preaching and saying, whew, just as soon as I get home, I'm going to straighten out this mess. Or, you know, as soon as I see that person, I'm, I'm going to straighten this out. Right? That's right. They, you know, God's just talking to him because God is talking to us all the time. All the time. He may, he may talk to you in the early morning hours before all this junk gets on your mind. Or he may talk to you late at night when everything is, is quiet. And, you know, but the Lord is talking to you all the time mm -hmm. because he is chastening you because he loves you. He does. And he don't, he don't want nothing to happen to you. It grieves him when he has to put uh, bring judgment on you and the destroyer comes and uh, does something to you or your family. You know, takes your life. You know, um, you depart out of here at a young age because you wouldn't listen. And he, he does discipline this children. Like right. I said the other day, I was getting up off the floor after I was getting knocked down because I, I wasn't even speaking out loud to the Lord. It was, mm -hmm. I was having an argument in my mind as he was mind, telling me to do and something. And he heard you, didn't he? Yeah, and I was saying, I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to do that. And so next thing I knew, I tripped or something and fell on the floor. I'm still hurt. You, you do have pain. He didn't break nothing, but I'm, I'm still sore. So, and I, that got my attention right away, and all I could do was repent, and I did exactly what I couldn't wait for the next day to do what he told me to do. I did it. See, if you're a child of God, or if you're not a child of God, the Holy Spirit is convicting you of sin if you're not a child of God. And if you are a child of God, he's convicting you too. Yeah. But you need to straighten this up. You know, don't do that. But, right. you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't miss. I'm kind of one of them people myself. I had to go through some uh, chastening of the Lord. I mean, he didn't he kill me. He didn't kill, kill me. He didn't, um, you know, um, leave me deformed or blind, crippled, or crazy. No. No. <laughs> Thank God for that. You, there. <laughs> you know, but here's a, a <laughs> verse here in the 27th chapter of Proverbs, verse 12, it says, A prudent man foresees the evil 
and hideth himself. But the simple or the fool passes on and are punished. What was this that amplified? It says a prudent man sees evil and hides himself and avoids it. But the naive who are easily misled continue on and are punished by suffering the consequences of the sin. That's God's word. You know, God, God is talking to you right now. I know he's talking to you. Yeah, he and he's saying whatever is not right in your life, you need to get it right. That's right. There is, uh, let's go look at another verse here. Uh, back up to the 26th chapter. Praise God. The 26th chapter, verses uh, 2, verse 2. It says, as a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causes shall not come. A whip for a, the horse, and a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. It, 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 uh, read them two verses out of Amplified. Like the sparrow in her wandering, like the swallow in her flying. So the curse without cause does not come and a light on the undeserving. Mm -hmm. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a ride for the backs of fools who refuse, refuse to learn. See, God so knows. Curse a light on, the, on those. God knows who is his. And we know God is not willing that any should perish. No but that all shall come to repentance and come to him right. and start listening to what he says. Now, let's go back to the 19th chapter. Let's look at another person. This is all through the Bible. You know, a lot, a lot of people say, well, you know, I have a, you know, we're not talking about child abuse here, you know, as far as a rod. Because and this is, uh, you know, in the society we live in, they don't want you to correct your children. But this is why we have all these disrespectful kids out here who will be telling their parents, I'm not going to do it. You know, and all this uh, disrespect uh, with their elders. You know, this is why we got all this because they're not being corrected. But what happens, they get corrected by God. And when you get corrected by God and he puts, and he, you know, judges you, you are handed over to the destroyer and what mm -hmm. Satan is Don't waiting on you, you, he's waiting to steal, kill, yeah. and destroy you. And this is why a lot of people, they go home early. You see it all through our society. Well, I wonder why, what happened to them? Why, why, why did that happen to them? That ain't the question why it happened to them. The question is... Why wasn't God able to protect him? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, the 19th chapter, the 29th verse. 19, this is Proverbs 19, 29. It says, um, Judgment are prepared for the scoffer and stripes for the back of a fool. Okay, what is yours say? It said, judgments are prepared for scoffers and beatings for the backs of thick-headed fools. <laughs> Amen. So what the Bible is telling, God is telling us this morning, that we need to judge ourselves. Yeah, we do. That's what God wants you to do, is judge yourself. Judge yourself. And stop looking at everybody And stop else. judging everybody else. Yeah. It says, for if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Amen. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we shall not be condemned with this world. Amen. If you're a child of God, God is going to chasten you so that you won't be condemned with right. this world. You just go home a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at Isaiah, <laughs> the 53rd chapter. Isaiah 53, 
very powerful chapter. You should have this marked in your Bible. It is marked. Um, it says in the fourth verse, this is why, you know, the Lord's got everything prepared for us. He says, surely he has bore our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we hid, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. He's given us a way out. Yes, he has. You know, we've been wandering around doing everything over at Tina's house and Bebe's house and Joe's house and everything else. Uh, how does it read on Amplified? We're going to stop right here. We want four through six. Four through six. But in fact, he has bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assumed that he was stricken, struck down by God, and degraded and humiliated by him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of all our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing to fall on him instead of us. Praise God. Jesus. You know, if, if we really had everything come on us that we deserve, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. You know, this is why some people, you, you, you know, people want to judge people, say, you know, I know he mm -hmm. should have got it by now. Yeah. But no, mm -hmm. Brother Carter has judged himself. Mm -hmm. Brother Carter used to be Bobby out here mm -hmm. doing everything that he was big enough to do. Mm -hmm. But when he ran into God and he ran into Jesus and he was, you know, um, realized that uh, this was God talking to him through his Holy Spirit, talking directly to me to yeah. repent. I repented. Amen. I judged myself. Judge I said, I ain't going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I, I even judged myself that I was living in one city and I moved all the way to another city. Amen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. I got completely out of the way from it. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be... No temptation for me to keep doing what I was doing. And see, this is what a lot of people do. They don't get away from what they were doing. you got to get away from them people. Amen. you got to change your environment. you got to change your thinking. And, and you got to truly repent. And when, when you truly repent, the Lord will have yes, mercy yes, on, you. Have mercy on you. you. And you will not get what you deserve. Amen. This is why some people looking, you probably looking at me today, say, I know him. I, he should have been gone. But the Lord had mercy on me because I repented. I said, I'm going to do what the Lord say to do. I'm going to say what the Lord wants me to say. I'm going to study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of nothing, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. We're not going to just present God's word anyway, any kind of way. Just like in our faith class, we're saying everything uh, happens is according to your faith. That's what Jesus said. And we're not going to say what the church is saying, that God is in control and anything that happens is no. the will of God. We're not going to say them little no. church sayings what no. everybody else is going to say. Right. Because if God was in control of everything, he wouldn't have written in his Bible that Satan is the God of this world. Now, it is going to come a time that God is going to be completely in control of everything, but that's going to be in heaven. 
But right now, he's given you a chance to repent and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And in that 13th chapter, the 31st verse, he said this. Let's just look at that before we go. And uh, because uh, in that 13th chapter of John, here's what we got to start doing and, and not just running our mouth about it. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I that love, back the I love them. And there's right. no action. No action. In this 13th chapter of John, the 34th verse, he says, A new commandment yes. I give and unto you, you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Amen. But this shall all men know that you are my disciples, Amen. if you love one to another. So don't be giving me no lip service talking about you love me and then I ask you for something and you go way off on the, on the far end. It's just like if you say you have faith and faith without works is dead. If you see your brother destitute and in need help, and you just tell him, "Well, I'm gonna pray for you," right. that is that, that's wrong. They need some that's food, wrong. Some clothes. And just like you know, the government wants to say, "Well, I don't think these people should have fifteen dollar minimum wage." Well, what do they think it costs to live in the United States hey, in this man. world oh, we live oh, in? You need to at least be making over fifty thousand dollars just to have a house and some food and clothes on your back. And they sitting up there, millionaires, and talking about what we should have. And they have scared to death with secret service people around. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this service. Um, I just thought I'd just add that there because I was watching uh, CNN. And, you know, uh, they'll tell you a lie one day, and then they'll turn around the next day and say, I didn't say that, but we're saying this. I hope y'all enjoyed our broadcast. We're getting out of Thank here, y'all. Jesus is Lord. See you on Tuesday.